Hey everybody, Kyrix here, and we're here to do my last minute wrap up of Resident Evil 3 Raccoon City. Which may just be called Resident Evil 3, but fuck it, I want it to have a tagline. Because otherwise I'll just keep calling it Nemesis. So, um... We're going to go through the, the good stuff and the bad. And there was some bad. I mean, I do almost nothing but gush about the video game throughout the entire eight episodes of it. And oddly enough, it seems the more I hate a Resident Evil game, the more I have to play it. Which is why this is finished at eight episodes. You know, Resident Evil 2 has two complete playthroughs. One for Claire A and Leon B. One for... Leon A, Claire B, etc. And then Resident Evil 7 just doesn't seem to stop because I'm trying to make myself like the game. So, let's start off by giving you stuff I didn't really go into. What did the game do wrong? We're going to start with the knife. I gloss over it, and uh, at this point I haven't messed with the DLC much. Not the DLC, I'm sorry. The shop unlocks much, like the knife that you get, the hot dogger might actually make up for this, but I'm talking about vanilla game. You know, like, start the game, you know, cutscene to credits, playthrough, no bonuses. And the knife leaves a lot to be desired. It's better in Carlos's hands, as he seems to have more combat techniques to use with it, but you, you generally just kind of get your ass kicked when you use the knife. And while that was a staple of Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3, and, well, not really Code Veronica, or so I'm told, um, in the later games, 4, 5, 6, and 7, the knife is a viable and very useful weapon, even if only to, to take out downed enemies. But, I mean, it has a significant amount of viability, and it, it kind of makes sense in the first three games, like, oh, these are zombies, your knife's not going to help you. Well, now you get to see how it can, and even in Resident Evil 6, with, uh, with Leon, I was shredding enemies with Leon's knife, constantly. So, the lack of a good knife really hurts this game, I believe. Um, let's see. Certain things were omitted, completely omitted. Uh, Gravedigger, for example, which, granted, Gravedigger wasn't a big deal, and he certainly wasn't imperative to the story, but he was a thing that popped up twice in the original game and could have given you more boss flexibility than just Nemesis. But Gravedigger was this giant worm creature, and he, he popped up once uh, as you were about to activate the subway car. And he would collapse the street underneath you. And you just basically had to get up a ladder before he ate you. You know, it wasn't really a fight. Then, about two-thirds through the game, as you're going through the zoo, he gets you again. And... Sorry. He gets you again, and um, this time it is a boss fight. And I think you can beat him the old-fashioned way, but the real trick is to shoot down... A, I think it's a lamp post into some water and lure him through it to electrocute him. But, uh, yeah, it, it's something that I think the game could have benefited a little from. Not that it was really lacking in enemy variety. It actually had, uh, if you don't count brain suckers and drain demos as two different creatures, it actually had more enemies than Seven did. No, or not Seven, uh, Three. But no, because three also had the web spinners, which were again absent in this game. Um, the clock tower was omitted. It didn't really need to be there, but it was omitted, and it was kind of a thing. It was a weird thing. It was at least there in uh, in spirit. It was mentioned several times. It was part of the. Um, Sorry, the, the, the things where I go quiet is me trying not to yawn into the mic. But it was mentioned as part of the subway route. Um, you never got your closure with the guy who locks himself in the truck. Um, in Resident Evil Nemesis, 
you uh, at the start of the game, he'd lock himself in the truck, and then later on, you'd have the chance to backtrack back there to get some things, and you'll discover that he let himself out of the truck and got eaten by zombies. And it might have been interesting to have that happen in the game, where you just come across him and he's, he got zombied, you know? Uh, what else? Uh, you didn't see enough of Nikolai's bullshit. It was a lot more subtle in Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. It wasn't until much later in the game that you would discover that he was a bad guy, whereas in this one, you discover it as soon as you leave. And it's pretty much hinted right away that he's a bad guy, whereas in uh, Nemesis, he would play the part a little while, and then you'd get, like, why'd you shoot this guy? Oh, he was about to turn into a zombie. You know, but he also, on the upside, he was also a lot more hammy evil when he did get evil versus the more charming, pragmatic evil of Raccoon City's nemesis or uh, <laughs> Raccoon City's Nikolai. And um, yeah, uh, and again, two games in a row, no sign of the web spinners. I'm guessing. Someone at uh, at Capcom must not like spiders. I mean, yeah, the brain suckers are there, and they're kind of spiders, but they're also kind of not. But the web spinners, the big fucking 10-foot-long tarantulas that used to be in all three of the original games, and I think possibly Code Veronica as well, that was an enemy staple. That was a thing. That was one of those enemies that was in all the games, them and the dogs, you know? And they were missing from 2 Remake, and they were missing from the Raccoon City Remake. So, what's what's that about? Also, no blue herbs at all in this game. That's really fucking weird, because, you know, as you know, if you're a long-time player, you mix a red, a blue, and a green, and you're not only going to heal, but a, a, some invincibility time, or at least heavy damage resistance. Which really would have come in handy in this game, and it's made all more all the more glaring by the fact that this the Nemesis, the original Resident Evil Three, was the game that feature debuted in. It used to be that a red, blue, green was just a full heal that also cured poison. And Nemesis is like, no, you're gonna take a lot of damage. If you take a red, blue, green, you'll shrug off some of that damage. Um, the freeze rounds are gone. It, it would have been interesting to have them. I mean, granted, they weren't in two either, but neither were explosive rounds, and they brought those back for this, so yeah. Part of the reason I'm going quiet now is I'm struggling to think of anything about this game I would change that I didn't like. Um... There's no replay factor as far as like things like the mercenaries and playing through with unlimited weapons goes. You can't get as many types of unlimited weapons, like no unlimited rocket launcher, no minigun. By the way, there was no rocket launcher at all in this game. I mean, yeah, there was one Carlos used, and there's Nemesis rocket launcher, but you don't get one, ever. Like, at all at all. Though, to be fair, in Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, now that I think about it, you didn't get one either. Uh, Mikhail had one in the, in the Mercenaries, and you could get one as a prize for beating the Mercenaries, but it wasn't in the game proper. So, that, that, we'll just chalk that up as weirdness. Um, hmm, what else? Any other iconic moments? Um... This was mentioned in one of those they should be embarrassed things. Um, the choice system was gone, and I did kind of like that. I mean, it's not horrible. It didn't really add much in the long run. It, it, was, it was the start of the game getting a better story, but it didn't really do much in the long run. I mean, let's be honest. Nine times out of ten in Nemesis, the choices mattered very little. It was basically, do you want to fight Nemesis or not? You know? That actually brings me to what's probably going to be the last point. Too many boss fights. Now, it's not like Resident Evil 7's too many boss fights. Every boss fight in this game made sense. 
they were all nemesis. But my problem is, off the top of my head, in, in Nemesis, there were three boss fights, not counting Gravedigger. There was the one when uh, Jill got infected. I'm sorry, there were four, okay. There was the boss fight in front of the clock tower where Jill gets infected. The boss fight coming back from the hospital after she's cured, which Carlos can do or Jill can do, I believe. The boss fight in the room where you basically dissolve Nemesis' head. And the final boss fight, where you hit him with the railgun. And the rest of it is just encounters that you can avoid, but you should try and take him out. Because if you drop him twice, he doesn't get back up until you run into him again. In this game, uh, as I've seen from admittedly scant resources... You can drop him a total of four times, meaning there's just four times where he's stoppable. And apparently in my playthrough, I got the two good items. The other ones were shotgun shells and some flame rounds or something. Basically ammo, which I was never really short on. And uh, so the end result was Nemesis... I think he should have appeared more as an enemy, and you should have had more opportunities to fight him. But all in all, he was very, very well handled, I think. And this should be my last nitpick, which is actually going to appear on both lists. The fact that you don't need to use the gunpowder, the fact that all this gunpowder is in the game, and you can basically beat the game without it, because I more or less did. I mean, yeah, I got gunpowder at the end just for shits and giggles, but I, I had enough ammo that I needed very little of it. And I think that's kind of damning that the game, on normal, mind you, gave you too much ammo. So we're going to immediately swing into the fact that we're going to the, uh, the good stuff now. The fact that you don't need to use the gunpowder. The fact that the game actually does provide you a balanced amount of ammo to get you through it. So yeah, that's both a that's a double-edged sword. Um, Nemesis, I think, was handled perfectly in general. I don't think I don't think he was underutilized, but he was never used so much that he overstayed his welcome. And every single time he appeared, he was a force of nature. Basically, he would frequently introduce himself by destroying things or tossing Jill around like a fucking rag doll. And uh, he, he felt like an unstoppable force. And even when he went down, you got the sense, even if you didn't already know, which, let's face it, we all did, that what you just did to him, as horrific as it was, as much of your ammo as it took, was only going to slow him down. And that's how he should be portrayed. But unlike Mr. X, he's not stalking you through the place, which is good because... He's like three times faster and like eight times stronger than Mr. X. The, the, the slow, I'm going to walk away from you thing wouldn't work against him. Hell, a couple times he outran me. Oh, we're going to uh, jump back real quick. Stun lock. This is a bad thing in the game. That's, I, I, two separate times I got stun locked. Multiple by Nemesis and once by the Hunters. So that's a thing. Uh, good characters. Jill is very well realized. Um, she's infinitely better than Ethan. And even better than Claire and Leon, because Claire and Leon didn't have a whole lot of other things to play off of. Whereas Jill, even when she was alone, was constantly in communication with somebody. And then you'd flick over to Carlos and be in contact with Tyrell the whole time, so that was cool too. There were some numerous side plots that were resolved that were kind of cool, like Dr. Bard. And my personal favorite, the reason they went back to the station and you got to see Brad Vickers, you got to see how the liquor killed the officers and so many other things. You got to see where in the continuity three, or I'm sorry, two fell. And that was just a lot of fun, especially for me. Um, Carlos, Mikhail, and Nikolai 
Oh, what's it? The fucking yawning, dude. Okay, Carlos, Mikhail, and Nikolai. All really well done. And Tyrell was a good new addition to the cast. I wasn't expecting new people, but it was cool. Brad Vickers was really well done. It makes me really hope we get remakes of Zero and One soon, so that we can get more of the Stars members fleshed out. And, uh... Another good thing, there was absolutely no mention of Wesker. I mentioned it a couple times. How Nikolai's like, oh, my employer wanted Umbrella buried. I'm thinking his employer's got to be Wesker. Well, Wesker was never name-dropped. He was never hinted at. He was never mentioned. And I think that's for the best, because I really think Wesker is the worst thing to ever happen to Resident Evil. Everything, everything involving Wesker from Code Veronica onward was just a downward spiral to me as far as the character goes. Let him have his moment of being a mad scientist in one. Let him die like all the other villains and just let it go. Uh, the weapons are all really good except for the knife, as before mentioned. The pistol wasn't too bad. You got that fucking 33 bullet clip. That was insane. Uh, and then after Carlos's last thing when you're in the hospital, you get the burst pistol, which thankfully has your your clip upgrade as well, so that's cool. Shotgun's really good. Um, the, uh, the, what's it called? Um, the, the various enhancements you get for it make it even better. The grenade launcher's good. The variety of ammo's good, but switching between them when you have to load all of them in really hurts. Because I never seem to have the right one loaded when hunters show up, and then I gotta play keep away. Grenades are good. Flash grenades are not super good, but they do have their uses. And the Magnum is, as always, awesome. So, that's the weapons. And, uh, I think, honestly, I think that's it. All in all, I loved the game. I highly recommend the game, and I do not get where all the hate for this game is coming from. But we're going to call it there, and I will see you at the next project, everyone, or when DLC comes out for this. Bye-bye, everybody.